I was an orphan child, raised in about six different families in three different states, but primarily in New Mexico. My childhood was one of fear, insecurity, punishment, and confusion. I was always wondering why nobody ever hugged me or wanted to keep me. What was so wrong with me? I remember looking into a mirror and trying to figure this out. I thought maybe if I had curly hair or straighter teeth, they would want to keep me. Fortunately, some of the households I lived in had dogs. I gravitated toward them. They were something I could hug, and they loved me in return. I got a lot of slurpy doggy kisses, lots of affirmation there. Unfortunately, I also witnessed a lot of animal mistreatment. As I was growing up, my love encompassed all created things, not just dogs. I found myself loving groundhogs and deer and bugs and ants. In fact, once I was late to school and got in trouble because I was trying not to step on the ants. I liked the flowing grass of grass in the plains, wildflowers, especially dandelions. All kids love dandelions. Trees. I was a tree hugger long before that term came to, into existence. And I have wonderful memories of lying on the ground at night in New Mexico with other little kids and gazing up at the skies, at the stars, looking for the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. When I was 19, I decided I wanted to be a, a nun, so I joined an order of Franciscan sisters. I didn't realize it at first, but Franci being a Franciscan turned out to be a perfect fit for me because St. Francis loved all of creation. He spoke of Brother Sun, Sister Moon, Brother Wind, Brother Fire, Sister Water, and Brother Wolf, and he loved the poor. And long before science proved him right, Francis already knew that all things are interconnected. In 1995, after working in New York uh, for over 10 years with poor people and immigrants, I returned to Pittsburgh to be part of our governing council. One of the first things I did in that new position was to form an environment committee at our mother house, which is what we call our headquarters. The heads of our various departments, finance, nursing, and so on, were all invited to be part of it, along with any interested sisters. I provided the educational components, shared my own research, brought in speakers, showed films, and distributed information. And the committee shared their ideas and information as well. We tried very hard to encourage the sisters, first of all, to rethink, especially to rethink, and reduce the amount of plastic we used. Were there alternatives? For example, instead of using all those little tiny creamers and mayos and peanut butter you get in fast food places, could we just use a larger one and reuse it if at all possible, and if not, recycle it? And the same held true for paper use and paper products. We discouraged water waste and energy waste. For each of these concerns, I gave proof of the devastation resulting from uh, the use of these things. Most of the sisters and staff didn't know, and probably you don't know, that there are five floating islands of garbage in the Pacific Ocean, and one is larger than Texas. It's referred to as the Great Garbage, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Sea animals are getting tangled in that garbage. Large birds like albatross feed it to their babies. These babies are found dead along the shorelines, and when they're opened up, their stomachs are filled with bottle tops, pieces of plastic, and so on. One of the committee members took charge of composting, the composting of food waste. In short, I did as much as I could. In 2005, my time in congregational leadership ended, so I left Pittsburgh and went back to full-time teaching. However, as a Spanish language teacher, I always looked for ways to incorporate care for the earth into my lessons. For example, one day while I was in the girls' bathroom, I heard one of them pulling out a bunch of paper towels to dry your hands, one after the other. So the next day I made it part of our lesson. I brought in a pan, a pitcher of water, a paper towel, and asked, the, and asked them to identify these items in Spanish. Then I asked, what am I doing now? Pouring water. What am I doing now? Washing my hands. Now I'm drying my hands. Miren, la toalla. Look at the towel. It's not completely wet. It still has dry spaces. You don't need two. Una es suficiente. I'm retired now. However, I still look for opportunities to get the message across. Often I have to bite my tongue because sometimes people run when they see me coming or their eyes glaze over. Occasionally, former students have let me know that my classes had an effect on their lives. Uh, so I'd like to read you, in closing, 
just a few lines from one of them. Well, not the whole thing. Um, I'll never forget the impact you've had on me. You've shown me a side of faith I've too often been denied. You live by example, caring for all things over yourself, and that sentiment has inspired me to do the same. Amen. <laughs>